Hello, this is Mel Gelderman, the co-founder and CEO of Token.com. And Token.com is like TikTok for tokens, the easiest possible investing experience to understand all the narratives out there. And today you're listening to Edge of NFT podcast, the show that merges entertainment and tokens and education and allows you to understand Web3 because we really do need to all understand it. It's going to change the world. So please keep listening. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. This is Edge of NFT live at ETH Denver. Today's sponsored episode is brought to you by Token.com. Welcome to the Edge of NFT, the podcast that brings you the top 1% of Web3 today and what will stand the test of time. We explore the nuts and bolts of the business side and also the human element of how Web3 is changing the way we interact with the things we love. This podcast is for the dreamers, disruptors, and doers who are pumped about this ecosystem and driving where it goes next. All right, this is Richard, and I'm here with Josh Krieger live at ETH Denver, and we are speaking to Mel Gutterman of Token.com. Mel is the visionary behind game-changing platforms like Monolith, the first Visa debit card with Ethereum integrated, and Token.com, a platform aiming to change how people interact with crypto. Token.com aims to simplify crypto investing, leveraging social media style profiles for intuitive access using token cards, investing in tokens and coins in one tap. All right, so let's jump right into it. How are you doing today, Mel? Very good. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, yeah. Pleasure to meet you both again. Yeah, yeah. So, well, actually, so I was at, um, I guess, Blockchain Future Summit. With, yeah, in Dubai. Yeah, that was great. Um, you know, that was my first time sort of getting exposed to what you guys are doing and now we finally get to meet again and do some content together, which is part of a broader partnership that we'll we'll talk about soon. But we're I'll... we're living through very exciting times, uh, like the price going up. So it's a very different vibe than the last time we were <laughs> seeing you. The market's so crazy right now. Yes. Yeah, yeah. How's um how's how have you been though, and and what's uh what's your first experience in Denver like so far? Well, I uh I am in love. With Denver it's got the mountains in the distance it's got legalized you know all kinds of things are, are allowed here that you can't do in other places so it's very fun yeah and uh East Denver is actually a lot bigger than I expected yeah well I mean I'm sure the the price of Bitcoin recently has sort of increased attendance and there's a lot of fun parties way too many to keep up with what kind of got you excited about the web3 space and, and uh prompted you to dive in yeah so when I joined the space, Web3 wasn't a word yet. That's something that came later. Like, um, ultimately, we, you know, as an industry, have the opportunity to completely re reinvent the world's finances, right? So um, the world today operates on this old financial system that is really close to, like, bulging at the seams, right? Like, like bursting at the seams, right? And we are here to basically create the space age economy, right? Something that will last for another hundred years, right? Until like the technological singularity, right? And, and like, we're still actually quite early days for that, right? Lots of innovation has happened in the last 15 years, but it's still pretty early. And, um, and what we're really excited about is how this technology ultimately will change the lives of everyone, not just people in the space, right? but everyone around us. And, and that's what our mission is with token.com. So let's, yeah. let's, let's lean into that for a second, right? So uh, there are many challenges, like you said, we're early and you've identified some and you decided, okay, I'm gonna tackle this and I'm gonna create token.com. So what does the world need to know about token.com? Like what makes it so much different and, and, and so much better through the experience of, of going through the process of being able to find different cryptocurrencies and then being able to potentially purchase them? Yeah, so we just have, a completely new approach to mass market crypto UX. So basically our observation is that, hey, Coinbase hasn't actually changed that much in the last like 10 years, right? Like all these exchanges, they essentially all look the same, but wh where's the innovation, right? And what we're building is something that should make tokens as exciting to, to all the normal people out there as say, you know, all the big social media apps are, right? And so our app literally ends up looking like TikTok for tokens, right? It is literally a, a swipeable interface where you go from one short video to the next. And on these short videos, right? Are like uh, the tokens are tagged, right? So like Bitcoin is tagged on a video talking about the latest, you know, Bitcoin ETF, right? And then um, people are basically just constantly exploring new narratives 
right? Going from one narrative to the next. And when they see something that resonates with them, they just smash that buy button. Just like on YouTube, you hit the like button, right? Well, here the action is you actually tap the buy button. It's a set size for each, for each user. It's a different size. So if you're a newbie, it's a $10 button. If you're like a whale, you know, it could be like a $10,000 button. But if it, if the story you're looking at resonates with you, you just tap that, you know, smash that, you know, that buy button. <laughs> so pretty, pretty cool. Very seamless. Um, what about, I guess the, the, the person that says, well, they should really look at the market conditions and maybe make those purchase decisions with a little bit more sort of forethought from a trading perspective. Yeah. 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 I mean, um, I, I guess so on the one hand, um, like we think that most people don't like, it's better to get people to start investing than not at all. Right. Yep. Um, on the other hand, we are doing so much to help you make better investment decisions. Right. So our app does, first of all, we are giving you stories and narratives that people don't get on Coinbase, right? So the, the bar is already really low with the existing exchanges. I mean, there's not a lot of context on exchanges, yeah. period, right? Exactly, exactly. That's completely right. So we start at least with, you know, giving narratives from people like yourselves about the tokens you guys talk about, right? And then we add additional layers of information. So um, for example, our app will show pretty soon who is investing in these tokens, right? So it might one day say andreessenhorowitz.eth, right? Invested in stacks or something, right? It, it might, we might be able to add all this additional social context to your investing experience that again, you're not getting on Coinbase or anywhere else really, right? So like, yes, we're trying to make investing extremely easy, extremely easy, very cognitively, you know, <laughs> easy to do, just like swiping TikTok, it's a mindless thing. We're trying to make it that easy because we, you no, know, we're actually competing with Facebook, with TikTok, with YouTube. That's for, for users' time, right? So it has to be as easy. But we can add all this additional information to make um, your decisions better than, uh, you know, than they would you know, in the current status quo of the market. And now for a quick word from our sponsor before we dive into the next segment. Are you ready to take your sports predictions to the next level? Look no further than maincard.io, the fantasy management platform that's taking the blockchain world by storm. With main card, every card is a ticket to excitement. You can predict sport outcomes, trade cards in the marketplace, and challenge opponents in thrilling weekly duels. And don't wait. Head to maincard.io now and start earning rewards with your NFTs because it pays to be early. And now back to today's episode. So as people are beginning to use and, and interact and get this information from the feed that's coming through, yeah. they're starting to get more access to tokens. And so like, how is the power shift from institutional players and, 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 and what's happening for people being having access to this to your regular person that now, because they are now getting more information, are more uh, right. knowledgeable about what's happening. Like, how do you see your platform helping with the, the power shift from institutional power to people being more empowered to make better decisions? I, I think that's actually a great question. So, so you're right. Essentially today, it seems like a lot of the power of what happens in the industry is with the large institutions, with the whales, right? We're definitely in a whale dominated industry. In the future, it may be much more social narrative driven, right? By creators like yourselves, right? If basically, if we succeed and in three years, you know, most retail users in the world, like 98% of people are using experiences like ours, which are storytelling driven rather than like charts and data driven. Um, the, the the whales will start caring about what normal people are are trading and excited in right so if if like normal people are all getting excited by a project that's going to build a base on the moon right you know then then like that's where a lot of the volume is going to go and that's where a lot of the trading excitement will go right so so yeah i, I think there's something really exciting about um changing the way trading works, you know, like our industry works today, focusing it more towards narratives and stories that people can believe in and that that's where the liquidity is driven rather than just, you know, what tokens are being, you know, like elevated somehow by our industry today, right? Like, like it, our app is, is ultimately creating a world where people are able to like direct their money, direct capital into the things they believe in, right? And that is a slightly different world than we live in today. Right? And I, I think that's a better world, right? So, so how many tokens are available now, and sort of what are your sort of expansion plans from a token perspective? 
Yes. So today we have 265 tokens on the platform. We are built to be relatively agnostic, right? So we are covering tokens from like, all, you know, all the stuff that's going on with like Bitcoin, you know, all the Bitcoin L2 narrative stuff to tokens on Solana, to tokens on Polkadot. We have everything basically we've built to be very, very agnostic. And um, yeah, like, I, I guess the, like the, yeah, the, the future here is um, one, well, I mean, now I'm kind of revealing a little much, but where we're really trying to go here is a future where it's actually ultimately the people themselves that can launch tokens, right? So one day, probably towards the end of the year, we will launch a feature where in the app, you can actually propose a token, right? So imagine you have a business idea, right? You want to start, you know, like a, you know, a, a Denver based, you know, like a, a coffee shop, right? You could put, upload a video to our app, right? Like a short TikTok style video to our app, tag, you know, your, your target, like, you know, how much money you need basically. And if enough, we will sh then put that video in the feed of all the people in Denver or all the people around the world that invest in coffee shops. And if enough, if your story resonates with enough people, your business could launch overnight, right? Through a token. That is ultimately where we think the token space needs to go for it to truly permeate and change society. That's a much more grandiose vision. And I realized at the beginning of this conversation uh, around the virtual, I guess there is a question in my mind um, when we're talking about this level of financial freedom with local regulation. Yeah. How do you navigate that sort of, uh, because there's still a lot of gray area, especially, um, you know, in the U.S., for example, and what can you tokenize, what can't you, what's a security, what's not a security, um, how does this relate to crowdfunding regulation, what yeah. are your thoughts on all that? Yeah, well, look, the reality is it's still a bit of a David versus Goliath, you know, situation for our industry right now, right? Like, the world still doesn't understand really that tokens are here to actually make things better for everyone, right? We're still seen as a threat. And so, you know, across the world, thankfully, the world isn't one global government, right? There are jurisdictions in the world that are actually going in the right way, that recognize the innovation that blockchain, that to tokens could offer, right? The opportunity here. And so our strategy right now is basically regulatory arbitrage, right? Which means that um, we are going to offer the services we can legally in the jurisdictions where they are able to be offered. Yeah, I mean, that's like we made, right? We, we interviewed them at Create Blockchain Week and they're approaching gaming the same way. So how you, what you can do with the game, what you can buy, what you can sell, what's an NFT, what's not, depends upon um, the local regulations. Um, it's a little bit more complicated from a technical capability, but it's just like uh, dealing with local tax restrictions or, or guidance as well, right? Yeah, I mean, specifically in the US, we sincerely hope that the SEC re reconsiders its current rule sets. And, uh, and, you know, ideally Hester Pierce becomes uh, the new chairman at some point. But, you know, like, um, yeah, like tokens tend to change, make our society so much more, well, ultimately so much more capitalist, right? Like, like there's this idea that token, you know, like, like we live in a capitalist world today, right? That's, that's why... We've built these amazing societies around us, but we live in a world where capitalism is really only reserved for the few, the, the people that are very well connected, right? That can get access to the money, right? But what tokens stand to potentially do is give, make a more meritocratic capitalist society, right? It's, it might even be a hyper capitalist society, right? Where, where everything can become tradable and like funded, right? And, uh, and that is, that is a very great, hopeful world. And we just hope that regulation sooner or later, and maybe things are actually changing, right? Because the Bitcoin ETF now, all this institutional money is piling in. So they're like loading up their bags now. And all of a sudden it could be that the narrative changes a lot, right? Like it could, it could. especially with this inflow that you're talking about, but on the, on the subject of, and not to get too futuristic here, but um, what do you think a future could look like if, as things are kind of becoming more and more tokenized, like where a lot of companies and everything that's happened is, is moving more to a tokenized economy. Like how is potential like AI empowered things like wearables, like, you know, Apple and their product and, and everything else. Like how, how does all of that start to converge together into like the future world that we're headed towards? Well, 
I can swear on the podcast. Fucking hell, this is uh that's I completely agree with you, right? So it's a little too early to take action on that specific future yet, but maybe I'm wrong, right? Vision Pro just came out, MetaQuest is really good. Um, but where we are going, right, is a world where tokens start to permeate all the objects and businesses around us. And we now have this technology, right? Apple Vision Pro, MetaQuest, right? That can overlay interface on the world around us, right? So imagine in the future, walking down the beach, right? And there's like, you're on holiday, you're on the beach, and there's this jet ski just parked there. And above the jet ski is basically this like little mini billboard, right? And it's like a smart contract. And all you need to do, you know, to hire it is just like hit the button, right? Like activate it. And like you put in your, your, your KYC driver's license and, you know, your, your, I mean, your, your, your tokens, right? Like your ID token, your driver's license token, like you pay the insurance and you can rent it for an hour, right? Like we, we are going to a world, right? Where, um, where interaction with the world around you becomes that much more seamless, right? It's really one major leap further than the internet ever even got us to, right? So you could, you could walk into a business, right? And have such a pleasant experience that by the time you walked out, you've invested a hundred bucks in them, right? And so have other customers that day, right? That's the ultimate, extremely interconnected. We, we're investing in all the things in society around us. We, do, we can't do that today. That's what tokens and AR, right? Mixed reality stand to do for us. And that world is coming, right? That world, it's super exciting. That world is coming. Before the end of the decade, it will be here. Yeah. So we're at the Epicenter building, which is ETH Denver, one of my favorite events of the year. I, I think I've gone last four years. Um, it's always different. And I think the culture shifts as the market shifts. What brings you to ETH Denver? Yeah. So um, this is my first time. I wish I had come here a lot sooner, I admit. <laughs> so. Um, what brings us here is essentially two things. It is to meet the biggest, baddest VCs the world has to offer. And the reality is most of them are in the US, right? And be because we want to be their play, we, you know, like the experiences we're having here is that we show our app to, to VCs and they're like, holy crap, this looks end game. This is like a, an actual mass market UX that we can believe in, like a social fight thing that we can actually get behind, right? So, so. Why, why do we need these VCs? Because we're really here to go toe to toe ultimately with Coinbase, with the established, you know, big exchanges, right? In a friendly way, right? Um, and we're going to need capital for that. We're, we're going to need professional backing. And I will not, for the life of me, let us pioneer this idea in the industry. And then someone else copies our idea and the, the big VCs back them, right? Because they're like, look at this token or something. Look how sec successful it is and raise 100 million rand, right? I would go insane if that happened. So, so that's the first. <laughs> I will literally go insane. The second is, you know, the reality is the US, you know, leads the world's narrative, right? Like this is where the epicenter of the culture is, right? And so here are uh, basically the world's biggest KOLs, including people like yourselves, right? And our app is this experience that elevates KOLs to a new level of financial, you know, power, right? Like you guys are directing, you know, like inadvertently, right? Or you guys are, people like you are, are um, helping steer the world's capital, right? People are watching, they have money to invest, right? They're learning here what they can invest in, right? On podcasts like, like this one. And um, our platform makes that connection even more seamless extremely we optimize for that right in a way that youtube and tiktok are not right they're just general purpose entertainment platforms this is one specifically designed for you as a user right to, to allocate your capital and as efficiently with your time as possible is the things you believe in and and we're here to meet k wells right we want we're launching this this social tiktok for tokens feature right it's launching this week in brazil where we already got 50 k wells signed up um we want to, you know, we're going to launch it pretty soon globally, and we want the best people on board representing, uh, you know, the, their visions, right, for the world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, ETH Denver is a place to definitely be in an environment around all of those things. So I think you're in the right spot for that. And no, definitely appreciate all those insights. And um, I'm actually excited to learn and get a little bit more insights about you. So we're actually about to shift to our next segment, which is called Edge Quick Hitters.
NFTLA returns as an inclusive week of community events throughout LA, celebrating the outer edge of innovation. Builders be building. There's so much energy colliding around gaming, AI, generative art, the metaverse, decentralized social, and the future of entertainment. If you want to be in the mix, including the official free NFTLA celebration, visit outeredge.live to subscribe for your updates in RSVP. Cool. All right. Exciting. <laughs> All right. So Edge Quick Hitters is a fun, quick way to get to know you a little bit better. We're going to ask you 10 questions, and we're looking for just a short, yeah. single word response, but feel free to expand if you get the urge. Yeah, ready? Understood. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. You seem like you can handle the hot seat, so I'm not worried about it. What is the first thing you remember ever purchasing in your life? Yeah, good question. So um, the first thing I think I vividly recall purchasing, my mind immediately goes to either my telescope, my RC car, or um, my RC planes, but that would be a little later, right? So when I was young, I bought, I was such a nerd, right? My bedroom was like a freaking laboratory. I'm serious, right? My first business started at 14, was an algae biofuel company, right? I can't quite <laughs> imagine my teenage self doing that, but that's what I was interested in, right? So yeah, very, very, very out there. All right, well, you kind of answered my second question, but I want to learn more. What is the first thing you remember ever selling in your life? Yeah, yeah, so, so indeed. Okay, so the, the shortest version of the story is, I was in my biology class. I was like already in the next chapter ahead of the, the rest of the class. And, there was this part which talks about how algae inside them have, well, lipids, which is another word for oil, I recognize, right? And so I read this NASA, I went home really quickly, I read this NASA paper from the 90s where they identified 20 different strains of algae that could be used on colonies in the future in, in space to grow like, you know, like, like food and, and, and to grow like oil, right? Like to, to create like plastics and whatever, right? Because we make that from oil. And back then, I was so concerned about climate change that I just completely became obsessed with the idea of algae oil, that we grow oil from algae that live today, right? That, that take carbon from the atmosphere today rather than extracting new oil from the ground, right? And so I ordered these algae from this Japanese research facility and some from Carolina Biological, which is based in North Carolina, and started growing these algae in my bedroom, right? It, literally turned into a laboratory, bought the microscope, my parents' bathroom, the windowsill, had all these huge tubes with algae bubbling oh and growing in them. And then I posted on the very first forum about oil for, from algae called oilgee.org or something. And this, this guy message, like, responded and asked if, if I could send him some of my algae. He wanted to also start experimenting. So I ended up basically s selling him over PayPal back then. Um, you know, a tube of my algae, right? And, and I earned like 60 bucks from it, right? That was my fir the first money I ever made commercially. And then I, that summer, I became so obsessed. I turned it into the first web shop ever. So I built my first website, integrated PayPal into it. And I had the first ever biofuel algae web shop, right? And uh, yeah, like end of the making. I mean, uh, I'd have to look at the admin again. I'm not entirely sure. So I didn't keep proper track, but probably around 10,000 euros over the course of three years. Yeah. That's wow. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's hustling in high school. I, yeah. I think uh, that's definitely a first in like yeah. our 300 plus episodes. For sure. That was super unique. Um, so here's a, a, another great question. Uh, what is the most recent thing you purchased? Um, aside from a fuck ton of crypto. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm demoing the app all the time. And I'm like, okay. Um, the most recent thing I have purchased Ah, uh, um, so, so I, uh, in my private life, right, I do one other exciting thing and I, I've become a pilot, right? So I like to fly planes across Europe, right? Land at little airfields. And so the last big thing I purchased was probably like aviation fuel. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a big one. I heard yeah. it's yeah. get pricey. Um, on the flip side, what is the most recent thing you've sold? Um, well, I mean, uh, the most recent thing I saw, okay, so during the pandemic, I, uh, I was living in London and I just lost my mind. I absolutely lost my mind. I, I can't be caged and I'm sure you guys completely relate. So I ended up um, buying and then selling recently 
a small sailboat that I lived on in Italy. So during the pandemic, I was having the time of my life. I was working from home on a sailboat in Italy. And then I'd sail to a new bay, jump in the water. I learned to spearfish. It was awesome. I highly recommend you guys uh, do that at some point in your life. Yeah. Sounds fun. All right. What is your most prized possession? Okay. Um, so without coming up with an unnecessarily complicated answer, I, I would really say like the company that we're building, this is years of work and so many risks, right? And when did you start? Yeah. So, so this is basically the second major project, right? That we've started. Token.com started during the pandemic where we had this vision, for, you know, we, we, we already owned the domain token.com. So 2021. Yeah. Yeah. So we owned the domain token.com already since 2017, actually. We never knew what we would launch on it. And then suddenly, in, you know, in 2021, this new vision came for, you know, let's build a mass market app that makes tokens accessible to everyone. Because I, I was watching my cousin, right? Like my 21-year-old cousin and my grandma and my mom all try to buy crypto. And they were using Coinbase and Kraken, right? And like, I just saw how painful those experiences was and how little context they were getting, right? And to me, crypto is all about the stories behind these token projects, right? That's why I was one of the first, you know, investors in Ethereum right back in the day. Because I believe Vitalik and the things he was saying. And I believe Alex van der Sande, you know, one of the other members of the Ethereum Foundation, right? Like they had such passionate stories. And to me, that is good invest, good long-term investing in the space. It's like investing in vision, right? And, and so nice. that app just doesn't exist. We built it. Yeah. Well, I, would, I, I gotta say, um, you know, from a domain name perspective, token.com has to be one of the, Great the, domain. The, 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 the best domain names out yeah. there for our industry. If you could buy anything in the world, digital, physical, service, experience is currently for sale, what would it be besides tokens.com? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have actually, that one is apparently for sale for 50 million. So it makes my, uh, I was a token. Hey, hey, well, well, hey, actually, you could, you could actually, that could be a legitimate answer to my question. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, a, that's a good, well, so I wouldn't buy tokens.com. What would I buy? Um, yeah, I would buy. <laughs> no, I mean, I, so, so what I, I think, right? Um, at some point. Okay, so can I say this online? Anyway, I was recently in the same environment as a Formula One driver, right? And all I could think was, no, I didn't say this to him, but all I could think was like, I bet he would use our app. Right? I bet he would enjoy our app more than any of the others, right? And so what I, I don't want to, you know, like buying is a weird word, right? In this context, but what I really want is, you know, ultimately this cycle, we will get the biggest non-crypto KOLs to sign up to our app and actually to advocate our app as the way to get into crypto because it speaks to people, gotcha. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Um... And it, it just shows you again, you're all in on the app and, and what you're building. And, you know, as a, as a founder, like I, I, I get that hustle. So um, the next question, if you could pass on one of your personality traits to the next generation, what would it be? Okay. <laughs> yes. So first of all, let me say, I think the world shouldn't give up on Gen Z, right? I think they're living in these, this very complicated time right and like all the troubles they're having i fully understand i think as millennials it's our job to make them succeed right and that is part of what we're trying to do with our app so really i think keeping the entrepreneurial spirit alive right like i've been an entrepreneur since i was a kid right self-starter and i think that is how we build an amazing future rather than the easier thing to do which is just complain about how the world is broken well guess what we literally are like we've come from the stone age right like it is the collective effort of brilliant people over the course of the last you know 100,000 years right that have slowly elevated us to this position now where we're doing whatever the hell we're doing now on the internet like we ha we're surrounded by advanced technology everything was invented by brilliant people that worked really hard that all strives to make the world one step little you know one little bit better than it was before right and so the world sucks today right a lot of young people agree, right? We're going to destroy all these things. Well, the way to make things better is to work hard and have a really strong conviction. 
for how we how we can solve it, not give up and blow everything up, right? Yeah. Okay, so the entrepreneurial spirit and, and to have the conviction to, to see it through. So on the other side, if you could eliminate one of your personality traits for the next generation, what would it be? ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, yeah, that's a double-edged sword. Like on the one hand, you know, I think I can hyper-focus on things, but geez, I wish I was, I could control my attention better than, uh, yeah, and, and the, the world is full of distractions. Like, but, but to be fair, I mean, that... That sort of personality trait is why you would create an app like the app that you're creating. I mean, it, it works for the ADHD, TikTok loving crowd, right? You completely saw through me. That's exactly right. The reason our app looks the way it is, right? The reason it's as like simple as like all the other time wasting apps, right? Is, be is because I have ADHD. <laughs> well, you know, less sugar. That's my only advice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'm always trying to cut down sugar, but, but I hear you. Um, what is the, what did you do just before joining us on the podcast? So, um, I guess I can say this. Why wouldn't I be able to say this? So we yesterday met, uh, got an intro to Pantera Capital, right? And that was very exciting, right? So we just came from the Pantera Capital house, uh, the coffee house or whatever they, they're calling it. And yeah, so we met some of their guys. So that's very, that's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And what are you going to do just after this podcast? Um, yes, very mundane answer, but we, you know, like at conferences like these for people who've never been to conferences, you basically end up connecting on telegram with hundreds of people in the span of two or three days. And then you're like left to pick up the scraps of like, you know, processing all of that. So that's what we're going to do tonight, because if you don't do it quickly, you're going to forget the details, right? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. We've learned that we, we, we debrief every day on who we met and what we're gonna do next exactly so yeah debrief yeah so important uh so we always like to wrap with the bonus question and you brought up something that i think resonates with a lot of people are uh, a pastime that people potentially want to pursue which is selling so you did this during the pandemic um what was probably the like most unique part of being able to like do that during the pandemic or, or what what unexpected thing came from that moment in life of being able to just sell and spearfish and everything else yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you know, people in crypto can probably relate, right? Like one of the things that makes crypto so amazing is self-sovereignty. The idea that you can control your own money. That's why I got into Bitcoin back in the day. And um, having a sailboat, right? Or like, like being able to sail or one step further, being able to fly yourself is the ultimate, for, you know, is like a physical form, right? Like if Bitcoin is a monetary form of self-sovereignty, Bitcoin, oh, you know, flying and you know, sailing are ways to physically have that. And when the pandemic happened, the idea that government can tell me where I can and can't go terrified me. I hate that feeling that something else is able to control me. Right? Like, because I, I was living in the UK, my family's all in the Netherlands, right? My friends are all over the place. The, the idea that I had to stay in my little fucking house in the UK was nuts to me, crazy, right? So, so basically, during the pandemic, the best I could do was get on a little sailboat, right? And like, at least I could go, you know, it's like a, it's like a mobile home on water, right? And then after the pandemic, as soon as like the lockdowns really lifted, and as soon as I had a little bit more time, I finished my pilot license. And so now, if shit ever hits the fan again, I can take me and my family, my friends, I, you know, I can basically get the, F, the hell out of there, right? Like, I don't know, like, I, I don't want to feel like, I, you know, we're going towards an apocalyptic world, but you know, it, you don't, you don't want to find out, right? Like, uh, you don't want you don't want to be left sitting there when shit goes down, right? You want to, want to secure your life and your, you know, everyone around you. Yeah. So for me that, that, and you know, that's uh, culminated in, uh, in getting my pilot license. Yeah. Very cool. This has been an awesome conversation. I would normally ask where do people go to learn more about you, but it's all over your shirt. So if you're, if you're watching this episode, uh, token.com if you're listening to it token.com yeah and uh dive down the rabbit hole right yeah the last thing i'll say is just like on availability of the app right so today the app is available um in latin america in europe and it's coming to indonesia thailand and uh, vietnam very soon we're, we're adding all the local payment integrations to this um the app will soon also be globally available including the u.s um, but just without the buying functionality. 
that'll come a little later probably hopefully this year right we're really trying to get that this year but um we'll have to navigate the regulatory environment yeah yeah well cool well look forward to staying in touch and hearing more about your adventures and this is great to really get to know you a little bit better a real pleasure to, to be on this podcast with you both. Thank you very much. And thanks everyone for listening. Yeah, yeah. A quick word from our sponsors who's ready to navigate the cutting edge of tomorrow's legal landscape. Because at Zuber Lawler, they're not just attorneys, they're visionaries. With expertise in emerging technologies like AI, blockchain, and the metaverse, they're paving the way for you to seize the future. For mergers and acquisitions to IP, their selective team delivers strategic solutions tailored to the ever-changing world of technology. Join us at Zuber Lawler, where the future meets the law at ZuberLawler.com. Back to the episode. We've reached the outer limit at the edge of NFT for today. Thanks for exploring with us. We've got space for more adventures on the Starship. So invite your friends or recruit some cool strangers. They'll make this journey all so much better. How? If you're listening, go to Spotify or iTunes right now. Rate us to say something awesome. And if you're watching this on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Invite a few friends to this episode. Lastly, be sure to tune in next time for more great Web3 content. Thanks again for sharing this time with us today. The views and opinions expressed on Edge of NFT reflect solely those views and opinions of the show hosts and its guests. Please make sure to do your own research. Our show is not financial advice. You understand that you are using any and all information available on or through this podcast at your own risk. Whenever making financial decisions, we recommend doing your own research and talking to your accountant for financial advice. From time to time, we may feature sponsored content on the show for which we receive value, and we may share links for which we receive a commission if you make a purchase through one of those links. Refer to our website, www.edgeofnft.com, for our full disclaimer, terms and conditions, and privacy policy.